Hello everyone and welcome to the third in this series of 12 by 12 scrapbooking layouts from the Cosette Picture My Life or Pocket Cards from Close to My Heart. I have created three double page spreads so this is the third one. I'll put a link in the description below for all of these series that I have done with the PML cards and I'll also have a link to all the products that I've used and just to remind you what these three videos have used from the April June close to my heart catalog. I've used these PML cards here. Now the PML cards come in six by four and four by three and you get 24 of them and they are double sided. So the orientations will change and if you've been watching along with this series that I've done you will see that. So this is the butterflies. I use this on the first layout. In this orientation they have a blue background. There are three butterflies running landscape style but when you flip it over it becomes a portrait style with the three butterflies running this way so they really are quite flexible and the color tones do change so this one that is more a papaya or coral type color when you flip it over it has a mist tone to it so they really are flexible to use and I loved the last one that I created that had a more masculine feel but this time as you can see we're going back to the florals because both sides of these have floral elements to them this one has a little bird and although I really love that for me the image is a little bit too large so I'm going to use the floral for this this one here is a six by four and I've cut that up because there was a lot of white space well in this case it's French vanilla so I've cut this up to make it a title of its own and I'm thinking this is going to go down in this corner this was a little three by three card and I've actually thrown away the part that I cut away so it had a green tone to it that had sort of a decorative piece to the card but I found that when I put it with this I didn't like the tone so I've chopped that down and I've fussy cut out the floral element that was on it and when I turned it over the other floral element was unharmed with my fussy cutting so I'm going to use both of those pieces this is a six by four and I've cut that out of this frame I'm not actually going to use this frame I was going to put it behind a photo mat, but I've decided that I'm not going to use that. I've kept this one as is. And if you remember from the last one, I had a six by four card and I separated out a couple of the strips, but I didn't use the notes. So I'm thinking I'm gonna use that on this layout. I'm gonna go through and dry fit everything, but I'm also going to do some stenciling on this. So I'm just going to give you an idea of where I'm gonna put everything thinking this will go here and this card can come out to the side. And then I'm going to have photos running up this side and this little pocket card is gonna come out from the top and a little journal box as well. So there's another spot for doing a little bit of journaling here. This one I'm gonna bring down a little bit, I think, and then I can put the journaling here. So this all groups together on this side. There's only one photo on this. You could put a five by seven if you wanted to. That would work quite well. And then the little notes can go here as well. Now, rather than having two floral elements next to each other and another one at the top here, what I think I'm gonna do is bring in some three by four photos. Now I'm not gonna mat these ones because I'm having these two as my hero type photos. So they're going to have the mats. And then I'm gonna put another photo here. And I've got these two little floral elements. So I'm just wondering, maybe I'll put one here and that's a bit too matchy matchy across this side. So maybe I'll just put that off to the side there. And I'm liking how this is looking. So I was having a bit of a play around with what stencils are currently available. A lot of our stencils have sold out. So when you see stencil packs and you want them, my advice is to order them straight away because they are very, very popular items. So I was looking at what we had available at the moment, this butterfly slimline stencil is quite pretty. So you get a layered stencil and an embossing folder. So this is what it looks like when you stencil it up. And I was trying with Desert Rose. I've got Desert Rose as the base layer and as my mattes. And the other ink color I'm gonna bring in is Rosemary, I think. And I tried that out 
as maybe putting something across here. But I did feel like the butterflies took the main focus away from the rest of the layout here. So I decided to go for something a little bit more subtle. So I'm going to use a card front stencil. This is currently in the core catalog and I'll just show you here. It comes in a pack of three. So there's two separate packs of slimline stencils, but you don't just have to use them on a slimline card. You can use them on an A5 card and on any scrapbooking project. But you can see this layers up and it gives you this effect here, but I decided I wanted something a little bit more delicate. So I am just going to use the little diamond sort of inside shapes here for these layered areas. So this is what I've come up with and it's the first thing that I need to do for these layouts. So I'm just going to move this one aside and keep everything somewhat in place. I'm going to bring my piece over here because I know this is the area that I want this element to come out of. So I'm just going to take these away for now. So there is a little bit of planning when it comes to stencils. And as I said, if you see stencils that you like, order them straight away. I know when I first look at the catalog, I look at the stencils and I think these are the things that I want to have. So they're the first things that go onto my order. So I've got Desert Rose and I'm going to be doing a lot of blending with it very, very light hand. So you saw me, I've just taken a bit of the ink off so that I don't get the darker side of this. I'm just gonna lift this back so that you can see. You can see how much lighter that is in comparison to this side. So I'm just putting some of this in various areas. I'm actually gonna go over the whole lot, I think. But when I get up to this top edge, because remember my spray of flowers is going to be going over here. I'm just gonna keep having a little look. And I love the subtleness of that. I think it's just the right touch for this soft and floral page. Bring in my rosemary ink. and I'm going to do exactly the same thing I'm not going to actually clean this stencil off at the moment because the Desert Rose is quite light. So I don't need to do that yet. I'm just going to move this a little bit. And because it's like a linear type design, I can fill the gaps. And see how dark Rosemary is there? So I'm taking quite a bit of that off because I only want a gentle little touch to it. So you can see that's just giving a lovely little light look. If I think I want to make it a bit deeper, I can. But once I've committed, if I go too heavy handed with it, it, I can't take it away. So I'd rather go with a very light hand and brushing off my brush onto some scrap paper so that I can always go back in if I need to. So that is building up quite nicely. And while I've got that in place, I'm just going to bring in that floral element and see if I like the look of that. And it gives a beautiful place for it to land. But what I think I might do is wipe this off. I'm just gonna get some paper towel and take most of the ink off. Bring back in Desert Rose. Put my rosemary aside so I don't get mixed up with it. And I'm going to extend the Desert Rose just a little bit. So I'm lining this up. I hope my head's not getting in the way. And I'm just going to do up into this area here. I like how that's looking. I want to just give it a little bit more of an organic feel by spraying some of it out onto this edge. So that looks good. And then back in with the rosemary ink. I think I should put my Versa mat on the left side next time I do a video like this because I'm sort of going across myself, but I always seem to work with my Versa mat off to the right. So I'm lining this up with the rosemary inked pieces so that I can go back in and just add a couple more. And I'm gonna call that quits. Bring in my layout pieces. But I think actually what I'm gonna do before I bring those in is treat this a little bit. 
I didn't want to fussy cut this out because of the script and I love the script words on here. I think they're so, so pretty, but to fussy cut that out would make it just a little bit awkward to use. So I'm going to put a little bit of this stenciling onto this area. Put a little bit over to the right of the card. Just very faintly. I'm even going to go over the top of the floral elements and you can see how that brings that piece in just a little bit. It makes it look like it's supposed to be there by layering it on top of the florals. I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this side, even into the words slightly. I might extend that up a little bit more. It's quite easy to line these up because of the linear design of it. And I didn't go into the words here. So I'll line this one up again. What am I doing? This way. <laughs> As I said, it was quite easy to do and now I'm struggling lining it up. So there we go. Just a few of these down into this word section. I don't want to cover up the whole card. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the rosemary. Offset it. Move my desert rose out of the way and bring in the rosemary. And I think that looks really gorgeous. So now I'm gonna do exactly the same thing on this side of the pocket card. Across some of the words, and across the floral elements. So that's basically done. I just think it fills that white space enough so that it doesn't look a little bit awkward on this page because this is French vanilla. It's a little bit deeper and creamier than a French vanilla, but it's putting French vanilla on top of French vanilla. And I don't want to ink around the edges of these ones. I still want it to have a delicate feel. So now I'm going to repeat this process for certain areas on the right page. Before I adhere everything on, I just wanted to mention, I've done a similar treatment with the background, but this time using Desert Rose. I've come in three quarters of an inch and gutted that out and trimmed my French vanilla down to 11 and three quarters. So that becomes my base and the mats I have cut from the inside of that piece. Now I'm also going to do some stamping with the ornamental borders. I've decided I'm going to use this scallop type edge one and I'm going to put that across the bottom. I've done some testing with Desert Rose in first generation and second generation and it's a little bit too much pink tone on pink tone. So then I went for rosemary and did first generation and second generation and I really quite like the second generation. So I'm going to, I've already put this on my block, so I'm going to do that stamping across the bottom and maybe across the top as well. I'm not too sure yet. I'm just making sure that that was rosemary because I did this the other day and it is. So when you're stamping off, even though you've got this area as your spongy side, it's quite good to have the piece that you're stamping off onto be onto a spongy piece as well because that helps with an even distribution of the ink if that's what you're going for. I don't mind if this looks a little bit organic but I'm going across, I can see the edge of my block here. And I love how that looks quite delicate. I really do think that the Desert Rose would have just been a little bit too much on the page. So using just two color inks, I haven't quite inked that up properly, has worked quite well. So I love how that looks. There's a little bit of a gap there, but I don't mind. I'm gonna repeat that for the left page as well. 
and doing second and even third generation stamping it's like three different ink colors in one pad so it really is a good economical way if you can't afford to buy a whole range of colors if you're just getting into stamping pick colors that you really know that you'll use a lot experiment with first and second and even third generation stamping and then as you move on add to your collection you don't have to have everything all at once so I'm going to flip everything over now and adhere my pieces and then I've got some finishing touches that I'm going to do to this layout. I've got everything adhered down but I've decided I want to put another title up here. I've got Life is Made Up of Moments but I'm looking at the Family Roots set and I'm thinking Memories Made Here or even Family coming out from the flowers. So what I do when I'm trying to think of another stamped image because I'm going to stamp directly onto my page I will actually peel that off as long as it's clean and place that onto my page so I get a bit of an idea if I like the look of that or if I would prefer to have maybe just family coming out from this section here I quite like how that nestles in there without being a big statement. So I think I'm going to go for family and I'm either going to do it in desert rose or in rosemary. Rosemary might be the colour I think because I'm finding the desert rose, there's quite a lot of pink tones on this. It's a new stamp, I haven't used it before so I'm just going to season it. And this little scrap piece of French vanilla that I was using to test on the stenciling, I'm going to use that to stamp on here and make sure that I'm happy with that colour. If you do something like this and it does mess up, you can always stamp it onto a piece of cardstock and make a little banner title. I'm just going to cut this out roughly with my scissors. and see if I like the look of that nestled in there with the other page next to it before I actually commit. And I quite like the look of that. So what I'm thinking I might do is just peel this back a little bit and then I'm going to see if I can line up under here. So I'm going to ink this up. I'm not going to do second generation ink. I want the title to be this tone. But I can line all of this up and then stamp that down and then make sure that you just leave the block on with fairly firm pressure you don't have to press too hard because as i've said before you don't want the fine lines smooshing out but if you leave it in contact with the piece of paper for a little bit of time you should get a very nice stamp so i'm really happy with how that looks and now i've just got this one little floral element that i'm not quite sure where i'm going to put I could put it on here. I'm going to bring in my second page again. It may not make the cut. I may not end up using it, but I can use it on a card or something else in another project. So you can see I've put this one here, but for some reason I'm having trouble working out where to put that one. It might actually be a nice little finisher for the top of this. It does make two on the same side, but I think I can live with that. So I'm going to adhere that down. And then I have just the final little piece of finishing touches to do to my pages. And I think I'm going to use this rose gold pearls. I think that's going to work quite well with these tones. Yes, it will. So I'm going to commit to that. And putting them on the PML cards is going to work as well. And this time I'm remembering to start on the left and work my way across. I'm going to actually do a little bit of a decorative piece there. I didn't start on the left. Just to finish that off a little bit and then I'm going to put a few of these dotted around these gorgeous little sprays of floral elements. I really do love the botanical look that Cosette offers. I think it's quite lovely and a delicate little touch to all of these 
PML cards, even the masculine ones. I've loved putting all of these together. So I hope you've enjoyed watching what I've done with this series of, oh, I've got a little blob there, so I'm going to make it look like it's meant to be there. Sometimes I get a little bit of ink spray going across things. As I was saying, I hope you enjoyed me putting together all three of these double page spreads. I have fussy cut out this PML card. You can see that I've cut into that and I'm going to put that on a card front. So I'll probably post that on my Instagram or Facebook accounts. You can find links to everything below. My CTMH Facebook page, my Instagram, and all the links to everything that I've used on this double page spread. I always put the list of everything in the description. So make sure that you click see more. Thank you so much to everybody who's been watching along with this and leaving your lovely comments. I'm so glad you've enjoyed what I've done with these Cosette Picture My Life cards. As always, happy crafting and bye for now.